All right, let's say on your ABR part three oral exam, you see a curve like this with the following questions. What is this? How does it work? How do you create one? What pattern do you heat in and what is simulated annealing? What are luminescent materials? What is the calibration process for this device? And how much fading can occur with a TLD? So you may, you probably aren't going to get all of these questions. It may be one or two questions, maybe three or four. And some of these may very well be subsequent questions as you're answering the primary question they throw in. But it's best to list these out. That way we can talk with them in this video and kind of walk you through the process and potential things you may need to know. So right here, this we see relative... Uh, thermoluminescence compared to temperature. So that is a glow curve from a TLD. That's important to be able to pick this out. And then how does it work? So the heat rate for the TLD is kept constant. So you can plot this thermoluminescence versus time. And as temperature is increased, the probability of the electrons escaping the traps increases. So there are many traps and at various different energy levels, you see all these different glow peaks because of those different traps. They all take different types of temperature to release the electrons, which is why you see these levels. Each peak here kind of uh, corresponds to a different energy level. So that's why you don't just see one straight uh, linear line, why also it takes different temperatures to bring out more electrons. So that it's important to understand just not that this is a glow curve, but how that works and be able to verbally explain it. So now how do you create one? You may understand this, but how do you create it? So a first step is you have to preheat the TLD. And you can look online, there are different temperatures and ranges and times for a lot of these, but you want to preheat the TLD and then in essentially its acquisition, you want to use a constant heat rate. And that is allows you to see all different energy levels. And then finally use annealing to reset the TLD. So uh, one important thing is the, and for example, we'll see here, the max thermoluminescence uh, for lithium fluoride, which is the most common TLD that we use in clinic, is approximately 180 to 260 degrees Celsius. So right here we see 190 degrees Celsius, and that is peak thermoluminescence. So there is... I'll see if I can draw this here. So we have right here uh, approximately what we would say is the preheat stage. So that's where you're just preheating your TLD. There will be some electrons that get out of those traps. And then we have this kind of slope, this linear slope. And right here is what we're going to call the acquisition phase. And so that's where you're slowly and constantly in pretty much the heat rate is constant. So you're increasing the rate at the same, or sorry, you're increasing the heat at the same rate. And you see these peaks at two and three and four and eventually five. And again, it's very important to increase the heat at the same temperature. And then once you get to your max thermoluminescence here, now you can uh, rapidly drop off. And so that would be our annealing state. And again, that annealing is so it wipes out any electrons within any of the traps, and then you are able to reuse that TLD. So what pattern do you heat in and what is simulated annealing? So I kind of already discussed some of this, but you have to remove the previous radiation and the thermal history so that's why we have to anneal this, as I just mentioned. Again, at lithium fluoride, this is around a 400, it ranges 300 to 400 degree C. So just know it's hundreds degrees Celsius, and you want to do that for one hour. So I'll put down here anneal 
that is going to be because this graph says 300 let's stick with it but it really can be 300 to 400 and you want to do that for approximately one hour and then you want 24 hours or i should just put one day at 80 degrees celsius so the 80 degrees Celsius part, the reason you want to put that there for 24 hours is that removes the peaks that we see here, one and two, by decreasing the trapping efficiency. These peaks go away after irradiation quickly, so by removing them, we can make ultimately the TLD much more stable, so that's important to know as well. So what are luminescent materials? What are some characteristics? So there is a difference between luminescence and fluorescence. So instant emission of light is fluorescence. If energy is required, then it's phosphorescence, uh, which is what we use. Phosphorescence, <laughs> that's a hard word to say. Now, lithium fluoride is close to tissue effective and under electronic equilibrium ratio of doses between soft tissue and TLDs are roughly the same ratio of mass energy absorption coefficients. So uh, that's kind of what luminescent materials are. We use the phosphorescence. And then the fact that we can use lithium fluoride, the fact it's close to tissue, and the fact that they have the same ratio of the mass energy absorption coefficient is beneficial. So that's why we use lithium fluoride. And a couple characteristics about those, probably good to know about those different materials in general. Don't go too much in detail there. So now what is the calibration process? So I've already talked about annealing quite a bit. So you know you have to anneal this. The calibration is the thermoluminescent output versus the dose in the phosphor. So this is linear up to 10 gray. Samples are irradiated to known doses to create a reference. And then when you irradiate one that you or heat one you don't know the irradiation rate, that will allow you by comparing to determine how much dose that has received. And then finally, how much can fading occur with a TLD? So this is a very much question they may ask because some of our personal badges are TLDs things like OSLDs uh, from IROC, it's important to know that, okay, well, I have this reading and we send it in. Is it going to fade by the time maybe one of the therapists got irradiated and they actually measure it? So a glow curve fades about a few percent per month. So I'm going to put that down here. Uh, just uh, So not very much, but something like you don't want to put it in a uh, you know, a drawer and forget about it. So it ideally needs to be read after 24 hours after irradiation. There is a 3% accuracy for these types of TLDs. And specifically, if you're using these for dose estimation, like you're using it for, a, you know, QA, that's where really you want to do that 24 hours after it's irradiated. If it's a personal monitoring and someone gets irradiated, you do want to ship it in quickly. But knowing that it's a few percent per month, it doesn't mean that, oh, okay, if I ship it, it's not the end of the world if it's read a couple of days or a week afterward. You just don't want it to be a long time unless you really want detailed results for QA or something, then you'd want to do it much sooner. So this is Glow Curves. If you have any questions, comment below. Something I think that is important to know, a lot of people know TLDs, but they don't know the details of creating the Glow Curves, what the Glow Curves mean. And it could be something that you definitely could be asked and something to brush up on. Thank you for watching. Best of luck studying.